Okay, the last thing we want to go over uh, with regards to flags is how to remove them. So it's a little bit different. It operates a little bit differently than it used to in Emil Pool. You used to be able to go to that specific flag and then um, sort of action that specific flag. And in IPSA, it's really just another par that gets added. So the, you know, initiating that flag inserts a record and then removing it inserts a removal record. It doesn't sort of take the whole thing away. So it, it you know, it, it allows for auditability and to track how many flags have been over a period of time. What we really want to do is just see how we, how we remove it. So again, it's the removal process is going to be a lot like the initiation process, uh, which we, we made a video for initiating a flag. I'll, I'll put that up there. Um, but once it's in, once the removal goes in, it will go through the S1 pool. The S1 will then action it, much like we did in those other videos about flags. But just to see really how simple it is, we click on uh, to submit a PAR here. We'll search for the individual. We'll click on their name. And we'll see that they have a flag that's approved. Uh, it doesn't really say what it's for. But if we click on it, click on the continue bar here, you'll see what this flag is for. So it shows they have an active flag. But rather than be able to delete this record or to update this record like we would in the past, we really just create a whole new PAR. So all I would do is click Create to PAR. I would use today's effective date. It would be a miscellaneous, just like we did when we initiated. And when it comes up, uh, removal of APFT flag. Ah, it was a CFT flag, huh? For specialist Y. Again, this will be a flag code. We are going to remove the APFT failure. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna report, final report satisfied. And then we would use today's date. So specialist CA list failed the PT test, had a long weekend, decided I ain't gonna be, go out like that. So he went and took a PT test the next day and passed. Now, the one difference you'll notice is that it requires an end date. So that is different than when we initiated. We have to put in the end date of the flag. We could insert comments, information. We would add the attachment of the passing APFT uh, 705. We'll click save and we will preview it for approval. And here we see it's going to go to the S1 pool just like it should. We'll click done and we will hit submit. So now what's gonna happen is it's gonna go back, to, it's gonna go to the S1 pool. The S1 pool will then insert the workflow template, uh, which means they're gonna send it directly to the company commander to get signed for this organization's policy. Uh, again, how you route flags with your organization is gonna be up to you and your S1 and your command to determine. Um, we did make a video about workflow templates, inferting, uh, inserting workflow templates, UDLs, things like that. So I'll put the iCard up there to check it out. ISE subscribe, uh, hit the like button, leave some comments, let us know how we're doing. Um, we are on S1Net and MillTube for those of you who can't watch YouTube at your office. I appreciate you watching. Defend and serve.